Hey guys, I'm back again, and this time I'm reviewing WWE The Attitude Era, which is the 51 minute documentary about the Attitude Era in the WWE. And to be honest with you, I'm, I don't like this release because it's 51 minutes for something that should be a lot longer. I mean, if you look at the Attitude Era, it lasted for what, five, six years, if I'm right? I think it went from, what, 1996 or 7, all the way up to 2001, so that's what they say in the documentary anyway. I have to be honest, this felt more of a best of than an actual talking. You had people talking about their favourite parts, like how Road Dog talked about the X, and how women would lift their tops off and flash their breasts at them, and how they went really, really crazy, and were doing it, and their kids would come up to him and go, suck it, and... And they tried invading WCW, which is actually one of my favourite parts of the actual era. When they drove to WCW to try, and take, to try and invade them. That was a great segment and really, really great television at the time. And the whole DX went before it had Road Dogg and Billy Gunning and had just Shawn Michaels, China and Triple H. And to be honest, that was the best DX for me. Because it was like two friends... And their bodyguard, China, who was obviously dating Triple H at the time. It was a great partnership. And then they added X-Pac and Road Dogg and Billy Gunn. And even though it was still good, it just didn't feel the same for me. But that was mentioned in it. They also mentioned Val Venus and him getting his choppy doppy dicky dicky cut off. Which was another one of my favourite highlights of the Attitude Era. When, when the Japanese wrestlers... Uh, take him to the room and I have a sword. They go, Chabé! and apparently they cut his penis off. That was really funny. I had to keep rewinding that on the best of Raw, I think it was, on one of those VHSs. My mum used to watch that and laugh. There was another one with Mark Henry when he was the sexual chocolate and he was with this transvestite like person and he didn't know. And that was great television as well because it was funny because that's what the actual there was about. It was about fun, excitement. And it talks about their war with the WCW at the time, slightly. It's more on the attitude there, but it, called, it was caused because of the war. Because they needed to have grip in television. And that's what made the attitude so special. The attitude ever. Now, they've got. They, I made a list of a couple of things, like the Godfather with his hose. People remember that. It was a fun time. Let's all get on the hoo train, you know. Then we had the hardcore title which was probably one of the most unique titles at the time. And I looked it up, and I think it was Crash Holly had it like 22 times and Raven 27, I think. I got that right. I mean, that went crazy. No one had it for more than three weeks, <laughs> which was great. You know, like one defense, like one title defense. Then you had the famous TLC matches, which took Mick Foley's over the top, falling through a cage and going crazy to a new athletic level, which made WWE big money because those matches were special. Then you had the ball for it all, which I never really saw at the time. And now I wish I had because they were real fights where Bart Gunn was knocking people out. And I did see the Butterbean match at WrestleMania 15. So that's where that come from. And then we've got the massive McMahon Austin feud. Now, I believe that McMahon being the evil boss in the Attitude Era is what made it so special. Because he was a big part of the storylines. A lot like how Eric Bischoff was in WCW. A big part of the NWO storylines. So, I like the whole storylines where Stephanie got kidnapped. The one with the Ministry of the Undertaker being in charge of this massive like cult. And then you had Steve Austin versus The Rock and Triple H. And it made it a really special time. But the problem with the documentary is the documentary doesn't get in depth. It talks about each thing for about a few minutes and then moves on. The documentary should have been at least two and a half hours and a lot more exciting. I mean, they got about Joel Briscoe and Pat Passing going against the street, the street Posse or whatever their names were. And they were friends with Shane McMahon, you know, like the Green Street Posse or whatever they were called. I can't remember. But because they weren't important. But it goes on about them. And that's not important. Nobody cared about it. What about Joel Briscoe? And Pat Person in the evening gown match. I mean, that was disgusting. But it was a great, great time. So, I really was happy with watching the old memories. But it felt like more of a best of than an actual documentary. And I said, 51 minutes, it wasn't that great. 
And I mean, I could go on about these things forever, these different things like the rock and sock connection. They mentioned that for a few minutes. But it's all stuff, again, like I say in other releases, that we all know about. We lived it. We don't need to see it again. We need to hear about what people thought about and talk about. We don't want to, yeah, we enjoy watching it, sure. But we can see the matches. We can see it on millions of different releases. We want to hear a proper documentary. We want to see more about what's going on. The best part about it for me was when it mentioned when he did the first address about how things need to be shaked up. And in the last bit where it showed him buying WCW and ECW. Overall, it's a very decent best of kind of thing. I mean, after, on the other discs, there's matches and there's other segments. But again, you know, bite for that if you want the actual stuff. Because even though the best of slash documentary kind of thing's okay, it's nothing special. There's no real depth. And that's what we want. We want depth. We want a full filled out documentary. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And have a lovely day. And please subscribe.